Oh, Jerry, can you tell us what are the, the benefits of a good night's sleep? Yes, Vignesh. Um, sleep, of course, um, is really um, the second biggest activity of our life after activity. Um, so our bodies are designed for a large chunk of sleep um, for, you know, a third to almost a half of our entire lifespan. Um, we do that because this is the time when the body renews itself. And you'll be interested to know a new study, fairly new study from the UK done by co collaboration between Oxford Economics and the National Centre for Social Research in the UK. Uh, found that, and here's their quote, a good night's sleep is worth more than quadrupling your disposable income. Better sleep is the biggest single contributor to living better. Mm. So, you know, you can have four times your income um, and a good night's sleep brings you more peace of mind, more happiness, more uh, well-being than having four times the amount of money. Um, and they say, this is a really important point, better sleep is the biggest single contributor to living better. And of course, the other side of it is poor sleep is linked with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, and sleep deprivation is then linked to heart disease and stroke. So again, the mind-body link is very strong there. Um, what causes poor sleep and what can we do about good sleep um, <clears throat> what causes poor sleep? Some of the things are external light, including from mobile devices, um, sugary drinks, caffeinated drinks, mm -hmm. outside noise, the time of going to bed, um, a number of different factors like that affect sleep quality. Do you want to ask about any of those? Um, yeah, so I mean, looking at myself and my friends and my peers, I think uh, we are also used to sleeping, uh, sleeping so late. For example, um, I think our average bedtime would be about two to three a.m. So yeah. So does it? Yeah. So like uh, looking at all the all, all the sleep deprivation effects, like how how can we correct this? Is, is there a, a, like a, a technique to help us sleep early or is just incorporating all the small tips that you just mentioned? Well, um, first of all, before we talk about tips, we should talk about what's ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we working towards? Really, um, <clears throat> there's a field of biology called chronobiology. Anyone can go online and learn about chronobiology. It's basically saying, the body has cycles uh, according to the time of day and night when it's active and less active. In the middle of the day, the sun is high, mm -hmm. the temperature is high, we're hungry at lunchtime. That's when the body is most active, <clears throat> burning up energy. It's why we want a good lunch. Um, and then with evening, it slows down. Now you see birds and animals all just go quiet around this time. Mm. We don't. Um, but our ancestors did. Mm. Since the development of electric light, uh, electricity and electric lights, we've assumed we can create daylight or the equivalent of daylight any time of day or night. Mm. And that if we can, we will. But if we can, we will doesn't mean we should. Because our body is programmed to do something different. It's programmed to slow down mm. in the night. Um, and you know that you're yawning, you're getting sleepy, and then around between 10 and 10.30, you get a second wind. Uh, and then, whoa, you're going again. And that's because the body, by 10, the chronobiological cycle is programmed for you to be sleeping. Mm. So if you really want to do this well, particularly, you know, if you're getting your mind in shape for exams or competition, Sleeping around 10 is the actual best time. Now, that's about four hours before the time you said uh, you guys go to sleep. Um, but 10, between 10 and 11, 11 is getting a bit late. 10, 10.30 is the optimal time to go to sleep. 
Um, how do you do that? Well, <clears throat> for a start, let's talk about social media. Social media, uh, there are a few things about it that are not good for sleep. Um, one is your mind is active. You're talking with people, not just social media, digital media. You can be online, reading something, searching for something, in and out of chats. Your mind is active when actually this is the time of day in terms of the evolution of our species, if we're going to take an evolutionary biology perspective on this, where there wasn't light. People couldn't look around or do things and they would basically be there in a little cluster in their community or in their home without light and sleep. But we've got light, we've now got digital media, the brain is going, we're driving the body against what millions of years of evolution have programmed it to do. Mm. Now, that's one thing that's just, so that's the stimulation point. Another thing is light. The light from the screen mm -hmm. activates the pineal gland in the brain, which produces melatonin, which is a neurotransmitter that uh, is associated with rest. So the higher the levels of melatonin, the uh, greater the level of rest in the body. Light stops the pineal gland through the optic nerve going into uh, that uh, midbrain area. The light stimulating the pineal gland says to it, oh, it's not night anymore. So it stops producing melatonin. So you're not being you're not generating the biochemistry of good sleep. Mm. So it's important not just to think, okay, I'm going to do this 10 o'clock or 10.30 thing. It's going to be a struggle, but I'm going to tell my buddies, I'm out, see you later. I'm going to have a sleep, no matter what you think. Turn off the screen and go to sleep. It doesn't work like that. You can turn off the screen, but you need 10, 15 minutes without any screen mm. to decompress. Now, so, that's a time when you can have a drink. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been research showing that chamomile tea, mm -hmm. um, lemon balm tea, uh, Melissa officinalis is the botanical name, um, they are associated with good sleep. So preparing the uh, conducive conditions for sleep is actually very important. So Very important. I see. So reduce like caffeine intake before sleep and then... <laughs> Yeah, re yeah, reduce what, screen time before sleep and, yes. for example, calming the mind by using chamomile, drinking chamomile tea. Yeah, so, and not being online not being and online. just resting. Mm -hmm. You can do a little bit of yoga before you go to sleep. As the research has found that yoga increases the amount of sleep and deepens the quality or the level of sleep. Do a little bit of yoga before going to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, Yes, the environment of sleep is important. And you mentioned caffeine. Um, caffeine stays in the blood supply for uh, around four hours at least. So if, you, if you're having coffee or strong tea, which has caffeine in it, um, before you sleep, then that's going to reduce the quality of sleep. It's not good to have coffee or strong tea. In Malaysia, you have tetaric. Yeah. It's a very milky, strong tea brew with lots of sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, all the things that are terrible for sleep. Um, sugar and strong tea. <laughs> it's a stimulant, not a, a relaxant. Uh, have you stumbled across um, mindfulness meditation? So I believe there are some articles uh, saying that it can help to prepare us uh, for deeper sleep, you can call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there are many different kinds of meditation. I do transcendental meditation, um, which I learned just after I graduated from university. I've been doing it ever since, twice a day. Uh, and it's a simple natural technique that allows the mind to settle down and experience finer and finer levels of thinking. And when the mind settles down, the body settles down and stress is released and you come out feeling more fresh. Um, mindfulness meditation that you mentioned um, there are many different types of mindfulness meditation, but uh, again, 
um, a relaxing kind of mindfulness meditation that doesn't try to make the mind concentrate uh, can also help with sleep. Um, also, um, sounds, uh, certain kinds of sounds and music can help. So um, people have become interested in uh, Tibetan singing bowls, you know, where a, a stick is, uh, is run around or a, mm. uh, some kind of wooden instrument is run around and it creates a kind of hum mm. that somehow is very soothing. Um, I find the Japanese flute music. The Japanese flute is called Shaku Hachi, S-H-A-K-U-H-A-C-H-I, Shaku Hachi. is very, very soothing and meditative. Um, in um, the tradition from India, the Vedic tradition, um, there are instrumental pieces called ragas, particularly associated with evening, evening ragas, uh, which are played on a stringed instrument called a sitar and with some soft drums called tabla, um, are designed to tune in with the chrono chronobiology of evening and settle the mind down. So some music, some meditation, um, I, some yoga, um, a soothing drink, um, not sugar, because sugar is a stimulant, um, will all help with quality of sleep. And then just uh, as to close with the quote from Oxford Economics and the UK National Centre for Social Research, better sleep is the biggest single contributor to living better. Okay.